If your potting soil is looking like a Picasso painting with green, white, black, orange blotches all over, then this video is for you because we're going to go over exactly why you have mold, algae, and everything else in between. So let's get into it. So this one I actually asked over on Instagram what your guys' potting soil issues were when it came to seed starting. And the Geek Crew turned up in record numbers as always to answer that question. And I got a ton of different ideas on what your guys' stress points were when it came to seed starting potting soil. So let's jump into the first one, which is the most common one, and that is what is that green stuff? So the green stuff that you're seeing is actually algae. Yeah, that's right, folks. It's algae. It's the algae, same algae you see in water. Now, oddly enough, algae in a soil system is a really good thing. It's one of those microbes, I guess, for lack of a better term, that you do not see normally in a soil system, particularly one that's not healthy. But when you have an all-star system, you definitely have algae present. And the reason why it's so beneficial is because it does a number of different things for your soil. Besides the obvious of contributing organic material, it actually helps with nitrogen fixation in the case that it's a cyanobacteria algae, which fun fact is like one of the first organisms on earth. You can go, I believe it's in Australia. There's like the cyanobacter mounds. Anyways, it's a cool thing. Look it up if you want to science your way through stuff. Algae also can produce bioactive compounds and these bioactive compounds can release amino acids, vitamins, help with nutrient cycling, you name it. There's a number of different functions for it. And while obviously not all of these benefit the plant, they benefit the soil ecosystem as a whole, meaning it benefits both the plant and it benefits the microbes. And if you watched my video on vitamins using expired vitamins as fertilizer, you probably know that plants do uptake some vitamins. Don't shoot the messenger, it's real. And lastly, it actually is a part of the nutrient cycle. So it can do everything from sequester carbon to increasing nitrogen and just being a fuel source for microbes to be able to release more bioavailable nutrients for your plant. So in a soil system, it's a good thing, but in your seed starting system, it may be cause for concern if it's there in excessive levels. So number one you tend to see is a form of crust on the soil surface. And you'll know it when you see it. It literally looks like a crust. Now this is fixable. All you need to do is kind of drag your finger across the top, use a fork, anything that'll disrupt that soil surface will actually break up this crust. But if you fail to break up that crust, it can actually reduce your levels of germination. It can actually cause a lot of dampening off issues. So it's something you want to watch out for that also remediate if needed through mechanical manipulation. There's no cinnamon or hydrogen peroxide that's going to save the day when it comes to that crust formation that algae can make. And like who likes crust anyways? I cut the crust off all my bread. So and weirdos, weirdos like crust. So because it photosynthesizes, it does need to uptake both moisture and nutrients. So if you have it in a soil system, particularly a smaller cell system, there's not a lot of moisture holding capacity either. So in the small, small cells, it actually could pose as basically competition for your seedlings. Whereas the larger sized ones, you probably don't have to worry about this as much, but it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind if you're dealing with a lot of it. So because it's a sign of excessive levels of moisture both ambiently and in the soil itself, it's very likely that it's going to be accompanied by fungal growth. So while it's not directly harming the plant through causing dampening off, it is a sign that you're probably headed that direction if it continues to kind of stay at that level of moisture and heat and that sort of thing. So the fix for algae in a potting soil 
is that there is none. It's going to show up no matter what. There's no way to kill it per se, because algae is everywhere, shockingly enough. And so because of that, it is one of those things that we have to embrace if it's there in small numbers, but it's something we need to mitigate with mechanical manipulation if it's there in excess. That's your only two solutions when it comes to the algae, but it's not a huge cause for concern, again, if it's in a small number. And it's actually beneficial when you go to bump up and put everything outdoors when you transplant outdoors because now you're adding algae to your soil which again is like hugely valuable to a soil system. Now let's talk about mold. Shockingly enough there is more than one kind of mold and all the types of mold have very different consequences for your soil or your seeds. So the white mold, the fluffy stuff, is saprophytic mold. And I had this actually develop inside of one of my soil containers. I'll insert some footage of it because I thought it was hilarious looking. I literally thought it was humidity on the side of the container for the longest time until I actually like looked at it. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on there? That's bizarre. So here's the thing. It can be caused by moisture and poor air circulation, but it's actually more likely being caused by something getting decomposed inside of your potting soil. So if you have a potting soil that is organic, meaning it contains any compost, vermicast, manure, peat, coir, sticks, all of it, you're going to have decomposition. It is a living soil, whether you like it or not. And so that decomposition will take place the moment that moisture is added. So while it's bad again in excess, it's not necessarily a bad thing if it's just there in minimal amounts because it's just your soil acting like soil. It's simply nutrient cycling. And that's what we want the decomposers to do. So don't fault them for it if that's what they're doing. Now, the only other time I've seen white mold that maybe isn't associated directly with the whole decomposition process is if someone has added mycelium fungi to their seed starting setups or someone has used potting soil that has mycelium fungi in it. So an example of this is the ProMix mycorrhizae potting soil it has an M on it. This is a good example of something that will have white fuzz because it's inoculated with it. There is sunshine mix number four, which also has mycorrhizal fungi. So if you're seeing white stuff and it's maybe not in your seed cells, but you pot it up into like a true potting soil, it's pretty normal. That is, it's supposed to be there. You paid for what you wanted. So that's why it's showing up. You can't fault your seed starting system for that one. You can only fault yourself. Now the fix to this is not using organic material, oddly enough. So there is ways to not use organic material. I actually did a video on this where I spoke about using fluval stratum and straight vermiculite to start seeds and had some really good results. So if you wanna know what it means to use those two inorganic forms of seed starting mediums so that you're gonna want to check out this video right here but needless to say if it's something that really truly bugs you there is ways around it and so I would actually switch to like a vermiculite or that fluval stratum that I was speaking to so the green mold there is mold that is green don't confuse it with algae they do look pretty different and the green mold can fall into two different forms of mold, one of which is harmful and the other of which is beneficial. But regardless, it's one of those situations where in excess, it's a bad thing in small amounts you should be okay unless of course it's the harmful type so to be safe rather than sorry you always want to make sure that you're taking your top off allowing for airflow or another trick actually is to top your seed starting trays with vermiculite because that in my opinion usually keeps the mold down and at bay. Now, this is the mold that I actually truly want you to be concerned about, and I don't even want you to treat it. I simply want you to dispose of the seeds in that setup, and that is black mold. And it is the same old black mold that causes a lot of health issues. Now, I very rarely see this in seed starting setups, but if you do, please dispose of it and start over from scratch. I know it's heartbreaking, but we just don't want those spores spreading anywhere 
in any capacity, if at all possible. So there is no solution other than the garbage for that guy. Now this one I've seen once and it was actually a couple years back. Someone in the geek crew DM'd me on Instagram and it was slime mold. It is either yellow or it is orange and it is completely harmless, but it's obviously a cosmetic issue because she looks ugly to say the least. Now there is no real treatment to this or prevention preventative other than airflow and obviously reducing the moisture and heat in the area but it's harmless it's totally harmless it just looks really really gross and ugly so that one you don't have to worry about but it's there and it's possible so next up is kind of like a white crust so this white crust is exactly what it sounds like and yes it's similar to kind of what salt looks like after it's evaporated and kind of left that ring around whatever space it was in and that is because it is caused by salt now this again is something we tend to not see in the pods such as these guys because they're either solely coconut coir or solely peat with nothing else added in. We also don't tend to see it with the vermiculite route or with the fluval stratum route. But when you start throwing in potting soils, particularly potting soils that claim to have some level of nutrients in them, we end up with salts. Now this isn't table salt, it's just regular fertilizer salt. And it can be from organic and it can be from conventional. Both versions of fertilizer will have some salts in them. And what this is meaning is that you're solely, very likely, bottom watering, which is causing capillary action. And then as, and it forces all the salt upwards, and then as it begins to evaporate, the water comes down and it leaves a crust on the soil surface. If you were to top water, water from the top down and let it kind of flush out, then you wouldn't end up with the salt accumulation. Now, the question is, is that salt accumulation a bad thing? And the answer is no, so long as you're noticing it's not having any negative consequences. But if it's something that is bothering you or it's starting to form some type of a crust on the soil surface, then I definitely want you to consider starting to water from the top downward. And the only time I bottom water would be very specifically for very tiny seeds or seedlings and if and or if you didn't have access to a mister. So even with the tiny seeds or seedlings, I would prefer you using a mister over bottom watering, but I get it. I get why you would bottom water. It's a heck of a lot easier. And so I'm on your side with that. Anything to save time, but just realize that if you're seeing that salt, that's why you're seeing the salt. Next one is gnats. So gnats are irritating, totally harmless. However, I will say, if they're there in excessive levels, I have seen them do some damage to plants and kill stuff off. So do with that information what you will. That is my experience. Some people will tell me I'm crazy, but I swear to God it happens. Now, my remedy to this is to get nematodes and to put them in the potting soil bag once I get the potting soil bag and I let it sit for two, three weeks if possible. And I just let the nematodes do their job. If you already have everything seeded and set up, you could pop the nematodes into the cells themselves. But keep in mind, you need to put a little bit of nematode in every single cell because you can't rely on the nematode to kind of move through every single one. So it's a little bit more tedious when it comes to time, but it definitely will take care of your nematode issue, but preferably it'd be something you prevent earlier in the whole process. Now the next issue you could see is really leggy plants, which is not always a caused by light, but it actually can be caused from a potting soil issue. So it's very likely if this is the case that the potting soil has way too much nutrients in it, meaning you used an actual potting soil, not a seed starting mix, or you're fertilizing when you're watering prior to that seedling really truly needing that extra bump of nutrients, particularly nitrogen. So that legginess, the way to kind of turn that ship around is to obviously stop watering with fertilizer. But if it's the soil itself, you need to just use a potting soil that a seed starting mix that is completely inert, not much is going on in it. And that's always your best bet. If you've already kind of 
potted everything up. It's too late at that point to kind of turn that ship around. So it's just one of those no better for next time situations, unfortunately, because the damage is already done and there's no real way to fix it unless you were to bump that seedling up and try to knock away as much soil around it as possible. But then to be honest, if you're seeing a leggy plant, it's probably already at the time and place where it actually does need some nutrients. So just leaving it alone is probably your better bet anyways. So yeah, just keep that one in mind that try to stay away from potting soil and just use a seed starting mix if that is something you are experiencing. Now this tip kind of goes along with the whole potting soil conversation versus seed starting mix conversation. And that is removing chunks. So if there are chunks of wood, plant debris, anything like that, you want to sift that out if at all possible. I have seed, seed starting mixes with this in and that is just a poor seed starting mix to be totally honest. And I've obviously seen it in potting soils, which it's a little bit more common there and not have any concern to be honest so long as it's not a crazy amount of chunks if you will but you always want a finer mix because it allows for really good soil seed contact it allows for very good healthy root development and when you have chunks in there it can impede a bunch of different processes but it's nothing that we want to have to deal with Geek Crew, what is your most common seed starting soil issue that you see? Comment it down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.